Hi, so you've been told that your dog is obese. Maybe you have questions, like thinking, what are the main causes of obesity in dogs? Why does it happen? How does it happen? Or perhaps you have a dog that's obese already and you're thinking, okay, now I know my dog is obese, what can I do to help my dog? How to manage this? Maybe your dog is not obese yet. You're thinking, what can I do to prevent my dog from being obese? All these questions will be answered in this little video. So, what are the main causes of canine obesity? Common knowledge would be if you feed too much, you exercise too little, they'll get fat. We understand that. Today I'm going to discuss with you four other causes that may not be as well known um, and we'll address a little bit more about it. The first one is age. The second one is the genetics, the genetic makeup, the genes. The third one is the effects of neutering. The fourth one is potential medical conditions that can cause that. So let's talk about the first one, age. You know when you are in your 30s or your 40s, the way you eat, what you eat and how much you eat is very, very different from what you'll be eating in your teens or in your 20s. The metabolism, what the body needs is just simply different. We cannot eat the same thing. So same for a dog. How to feed them has to reflect on how old are they. When they're younger, they burn faster, metabolism is much higher. When they're older, metabolism slows down and they don't digest fats as well or as fast or as effectively. The second one is genetic makeup. So all dogs are different, all humans are different. You know you're very, very different from your sister or your brother, if you have any. Even though you come from the same mother and father, and we are all human, it's all different. Same for dogs. So just because you have a, a dog that you think, or maybe even two dogs of the same breed, in the same family, you are feeding them the same thing, you have to be quite careful, because they may metabolize the food quite differently. Or if you have two dogs of different breeds, like a Labrador and a Border Collie, they may metabolize the food differently as well. So just be quite careful rather than saying they're both two years old, hence they should be fed the same. Or they're both about the same size, so they should be fed the same. Just be quite careful. Each dog, just like us, have a very unique genetic makeup. The third reason we discuss is neutering. We mentioned neutering. So when your bitch is spayed or when the dog is castrated, removing the sexual organs can affect the hormonal uh, balance or the hormonal input into the system. And hence, that can also um, reflect in how good your dog becomes in metabolizing the fats, the food that you used to eat. And also, it affects the brain a little bit, whereby the satiety center, whereby it's a bit of the brain that says that I am full, appear to be a little bit more uh, disrupted or reduce after the animal is spayed, which means that they are not able to say, okay, I'm full, I'll stop now. So what it fundamentally means is that if your animal is spayed, you can still maintain its correct body condition or the correct weight by limiting the food that you're giving your dog. The fourth one, medical conditions. There are some medical conditions that can make your dog fat, okay? Um, the two most common ones would be adrenal glands related conditions. So adrenal glands, if they produces too little steroids, it's hypoadrenocorticism or Addison's uh, after the man who found it, can cause your dogs to be fat because what happens is that the metabolism slows down. So whatever food your dog takes in, just simply doesn't get digested as well and just get laid down as fats. And that can certainly make a dog fatter, okay? On the other hand, if you have too much um, this particular hormone called cortisol being produced, um, that becomes hyperadrenocorticism or Cushing's disease, that can also cause your animal to eat more, your little dog to eat more because of the increase in steroids and hence become fat. So an imbalance of cortisol production, whether it's too little or too much, can also cause a dog to be fat. So that is also one thing to note. 
that it simply sometimes isn't your fault. It's not what you did. It's not what your dog did. It was just a medical condition. So please do speak to your vet to find out more about that, those conditions if you're concerned about that. Okay? So your vet has told you your dog is obese. What can you do? Few different things. Keep it simple. We know that if there are too many things to do, it gets too confusing and you have what we call paralysis by analysis. You think too much. I keep it very simple. There are just two rules to that. One is weigh your dog and weigh the food. Very simple. What do I mean by that? You need to know how much your dog is weighing right now. For example, if your dog is 30 kilos, okay, and it is a little bit overweight, the body condition score is say eight out of nine or seven out of nine, quite far from the five out of nine they're aiming for, okay, then you have to weigh the food. So example, if you're giving, uh, I'm just putting an example, 100 grams of dry food, okay, what you're gonna do is now you know how much your dog weighs and you know how much the food weighs, you will continue doing what you're doing and weigh our little dog in two weeks time. In two weeks time, if our little friend here is still the same weight at 30 kilos, you know that whatever you're feeding is still too much because you have not managed to reduce the weight, okay? So, because you have weighed your food, when your vet tells you to say reduce 10% of the food intake, you can. You're giving 100 grams, so now you give 90 grams. And what happens is that in two weeks time, you weigh your dog again and see what the weight is. Because you have weighed your dog consistently over two weeks and the food consistently over two weeks, number one, you know exactly whether your so-called diet is working or not by the weight of your dog. Number two, you know you can very objectively reduce the amount of food by the desired amount, for example, 10%, because you have weighed the food. Just by these two, weigh the dog, weigh the food, weigh the dog, weigh the food, this will allow you to monitor how much food you're giving. Certainly, there are a lot of other practices out there whereby there is different dog food, lower calorie food, high fiber food, and things like that. It's all very good, but it still comes back to the same basic thing. No matter what food you use, if you're not weighing a dog, you're not weighing the food, you have no way of monitoring anything. We can only improve what we measure, and we can only improve dramatically what we measure constantly. So weigh the dog, weigh the food. It's really as simple as that. What if your dog is of the perfect body condition right now, you've been very conscientious, so what can you do to make sure that it doesn't get fat? So, same again, okay? Very, very simply, you can do what we did earlier on, weigh the dog, weigh the food, okay? Because you will know exactly how much you're feeding and what amount of food will, uh, will result in what the body weight is, resulting in the body condition, okay? On top of that, you want to be thinking about what's the exercise, what's the activity level, what's the activity level that you're giving your dog? What sort of lifestyle are you having for your dog? Do you walk your dog regularly? Do you walk your dog only on the weekends? Do you walk your dog for 15 minutes in a week and go for a marathon over the weekend? What sort of lifestyle do you lead the dog? So apart from looking at how much your dog weighs, what, uh, how much food you're giving, what sort of food you're giving potentially, and what sort of uh, exercise are you giving your dog? Those are all very, very good gauges, okay, or things that you can do physically that doesn't take too much time uh, and too much effort to make sure your dog stays in the right body condition. And now that you know about body condition and you know that that is much more important than the weight itself, if you're not sure what body condition is about, make sure you watch the last video, part one of this particular uh, series of uh, obesity in dogs. I hope that's been useful for you. Comment below what your dog weighs and what you think the body condition is and what are your little tricks and tips to make sure your dog is of the right body condition. This is Amity.